Getting through airport security with liquids can be somewhat stressful, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, I'm gonna break down TSA's rules for liquids and show you what I pack in my TSA approved toiletry bag. Hey everybody, I'm Allie, and my husband and I just wrapped up six months of full-time travel living out of nothing but carry-on suitcases. During that time period, we took something like 40 flights. So I've picked up some tips and hacks along the way on how to get through security with my toiletry bag. It's easy to get confused by TSA's rules in regards to liquids in your carry-on suitcase, but it's pretty simple. So I'm gonna break it down. The rule is three, one, one. All liquids, gels, creams, aerosols and pastes must be in a 3.4 ounce container or smaller. All of these compliant liquids must go into a one quart bag that is clear, plastic, and zip top, and you are only allowed one of these bags per passenger. So two quick things in regards to this 3-1-1 rule. The TSA states that a container size is dictated by what is actually on the bottle. So there's no getting around having a container that is larger than 3.4 ounces, even if what is inside the container is less than three ounces. This would need to go inside of your checked bag or the TSA will throw it away at security. Additionally, when it comes to liquids, the TSA counts food and drinks towards this one quart allotment. So you've got to think about things like snacks and peanut butter as needing to be inside of that single bag allotment for quote toiletries. Okay, now that we've gotten through all of the rules, here are a couple of tips and hacks that I've picked up along the way to help me get through security with my toiletry bag. First and foremost, and this may sound pretty obvious, but remember, not all of your toiletries and makeup have to go in this bag. Only your liquids have to go into your single toiletry bag. With that, trade as many liquids for solid product options as you can. For example, dry shampoo usually comes in an aerosol can, but if you can trade it for a dry shampoo powder, which will one, usually last you longer, and two, does not have to go into your bag because it is a powder and not a liquid. Next, if you're traveling with a partner or a male companion, typically they are going to have less toiletry items than a female. Let's just be real. Be willing and ready to pawn off some of your toiletries onto this partner if they are open to it to help you meet your one core allotment for the TSA rules. I don't know how many times I have had Nick take some of my toiletry items and put them in his toiletry bags just so I could get through TSA. Also, make sure your TSA approved toiletry bag is in a quick access place. The last thing you want to do is be the holdup in the security line because you're digging through your carry-on bag trying to find this toiletry bag. You know you have to take it out and place it in the bin, so just make sure it's in a quick access spot. I personally carry mine in my personal item bag, so in my backpack, so it's just quick access to throw into the bin and get through security very quickly. Lastly, don't be overly attached to anything. There's a chance that you encounter a rule or an agent that's just overly strict or going to make you throw something away. RIP some perfectly good Olaplex shampoo and conditioner that I lost in Poland. You just gotta be ready that any of these items can go away, which is fine because you're gonna be able to find most of your toiletries in the places that you're going, but just be ready to do that. So don't take anything that you would say is too valuable that you couldn't lose it. So now it's time to jump into what I actually pack for toiletries and what makes it into my one quart TSA approved toiletry bag. First and foremost, this is the actual toiletry bag that I pack and put into my carry-on 
for every single trip. It is a square clear bag that's plastic and has the zipper on the top. It's perfect for TSA. It goes straight into my backpack. Um, and I got this on Amazon for pretty cheap, honestly, and it came with a couple of different colors, but this is my toiletry bag. From a liquid standpoint, I really do try to limit the amount of liquids that I carry in my toiletry bag. I usually have some sort of travel size shampoo and conditioner. If you are a person that can use a shampoo bar, I would personally recommend that because it won't count towards your liquids, but my hair just doesn't cooperate, so I have to have just the traditional shampoo and conditioner. I'm not picky when it comes to my shampoo and conditioner, so I just get whatever travel size versions I can get at like a pharmacy or you know a Walgreens. But if you have special shampoo and conditioner that you have to have on your trip, you can get TSA approved 3.4 ounce bottles that you can refill with whatever shampoo, conditioner, creams, or gels that you would like. These are really great options. They're silicone, they're squeeze tubes. Um, so if you need to do that, you can. For more hair products, I honestly am pretty low maintenance when it comes to my hair but try to be as minimal as possible on the number of hair styling products you bring that are liquid based. For me, I opt for an all-in-one styler. This one's by Olaplex. So this is like a five-in-one product that styles, smooths, heat protectant, all of those things in one. So I only have to bring one item. This is in a 3.3 ounce bottle as well, so it comes in an already approved TSA travel size. Of course, I have to bring toothpaste. I typically like to have a micellar water as well to help wash my face, particularly on the plane when I'm not gonna have access to a sink um, or you know if I'm staying in a place where the water is pretty questionable, I like to wash my face with a micellar water. So this one's from Garnier and it comes in the travel size as well. And I won't use this all of the time, but it's nice to have it as an option if I'm in a pinch. Another item that I really like to have in my toiletry bag is an acne spot treatment. And I know that sounds pretty specific, but when you're traveling and you're trying a bunch of new food or foods that you're not used to, let's just get real. There's an opportunity for pimples to pop up. Uh, so we have this Origins Spot Treatment. It's in a very, very small container, but this goes into my toiletry bag for every trip. A great multi-purpose item to have when you travel is Vaseline. Vaseline can cover a multitude of things. It's great for chapped lips. It's great for minor cuts and burns. So I always have a small travel size container of Vaseline on me while we're traveling, especially in airplanes. They can like dry out your skin like crazy and Vaseline is perfect for that. So these are all of my technical liquids. As you can see, it's not that much that falls under what the TSA would identify as liquids that have to go into my toiletry bag. Now for everything that's in my toiletry bag that isn't technically a liquid. I always have a travel size deodorant. This sometimes goes in my bag and sometimes I just throw this into like my personal item bag because it's a solid, it doesn't matter where it goes in my carry-on. I also have a face soap that's actually a bar. This one is from Clinique and is really great because it lasts a long time. This thing lasted six months between me and Nick using it and it comes in a handy travel case. This I actually just pack into my carry-on suitcase because it's a solid. It doesn't take up any room in my toiletry bag. I also like to opt for a solid sunscreen stick. We wear sunscreen every day, or at least try to, and having a stick form of it allows us to make sure we always have sunscreen on us. And this lasts forever as well. And sometimes sunscreen can get pretty expensive in places depending on what destination you're going to. So I like to have a small option for sunscreen in my bag and the stick works out really well as a solid. Another big shift that I made that was a game changer in space in my toiletry bag was changing from aerosol travel size cans of dry shampoo to a powder based dry shampoo. This one's from Aveda. It's two ounces and I've had this thing for four months and I still have half of the container left of powder. Somehow dry shampoo powder just lasts longer and it doesn't count against your liquid rule for your TSA toiletry bag. Another item that I switched to a solid option was for face moisturizer. So 
Most of the time, face moisturizer comes in a cream, which would count towards your liquids, but I switched to a stick moisturizer, which this one is from Coco Kind, and I just got this at Target. It works perfect for moisturizing your skin and your face, but being a solid option. I always have chapstick in my toiletry bag. I always have like 500 chapsticks, let's be honest. They're all in different spots in my bag. Chapsticks count as solids. So I just have these hidden throughout my suitcase, toiletry bag, anywhere and everywhere I can fit a chapstick, I have one. The last two essentials in my toiletry bag are my toothbrush, which should be no shock, and a razor. This toothbrush is a Philips electric toothbrush that comes in a handy travel case. And then this is just a disposable razor that I can actually change the razor heads on. Um, so I typically just bring a couple of extra with me, but these are the last two items that I would say fall in my toiletry bag. So that's all of the items that I pack from a toiletry standpoint. And because of how I've optimized what products I've chosen between liquids and solids, you can see that my TSA toiletry bag isn't even halfway full with liquids. So I'm honestly able to pack a majority of my toiletries into this bag, like this. Honestly, this is my toiletry bag with everything liquid and solid. I can pull this out during security and no questions asked, it gets through security 99% of the time. The only toiletry item that doesn't make it into that bag is this face soap bar. And part of it's just because the shape of the container is a little weird. So if you can optimize your products between liquids and solids, you should have no issue getting through TSA with the items that you want to carry on with you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in more travel tips, please subscribe to our channel. And if you want to know the most common carry on packing mistakes, you can watch this video here. Bye.